Is the universe really infinite? Or could it close back on itself like a sphere? If it's infinite, how can it expand? And is it true that there might be copies of you in it? These are all questions which were discussed in a recent video from Kurzgesagt and some random string of letters on X Twitter asked me if I could fill in the academic background. And of course, how could I not oblige if someone asks me to release my inner nerd? So here we go. The first question, is the universe really infinite, is easy to answer. We don't know. We can't know since because the Big Bang there's only been so much time for light to travel. So we only only see part of the universe. And beyond that part which we see, the universe might go on forever or not. In our mathematics, we use a universe that's infinite in size, but we just do this because it's simple and it might not be physically correct. To see why, I need to tell you a little about how we use Einstein's theory of general relativity. This theory says that space and time form a common entity called space-time and that this space-time can curve. You often see this illustrated with, you know, a rubber sheet with a ball in it and marbles and stuff. This suggests that curvature is something that you infer from looking at space-time from the outside. You see that the sheet is bent. But this isn't what we mean by a curved space or curved space-time in general relativity. The curvature of space-time is something that's measured internally in the space. And it's also the reason why I'm sitting on this desk, because the simplest possible example is a flat sheet of paper. Exciting, I know, but bear with me. How do we know the paper's flat? Easy enough, you draw a triangle on it and then you measure all the interior angles and add them up. If they add to 180 degrees, no matter which triangle you draw and no matter which size, the space is flat. Homework assignment, draw all possible triangles on a sheet of paper and prove that it's flat. The thing is though, that the angles of triangles don't always add up that way. Take for example a sphere. In an extreme case, you can draw a triangle by following the equator, turn 90 degrees, go to the North Pole, turn 90 degrees, go back to the equator and turn 90 degrees back onto the equator. Now you have a triangle with three 90 degree angles, that's 270 degrees in total. Yes, you already knew that a sphere isn't flat, but the point is that you don't need to be able to look at the sphere from the outside. You can infer its curvature entirely from measurements on the sphere. When it comes to the curvature of space and time, it's the same thing. We say they're curved because of properties that we measure entirely on the inside. The things we measure are observable such as the redshift of light or the travel time or the paths on which bodies move and so on. You could ask now, well, if those are all things we measure on the inside, what sense does it even make to call this curvature? Couldn't we just say that space-time is flat, just that these observables have difficult relations that are mediated by some sort of field? Indeed, this is a valid interpretation of the maths, that you refuse to give this a geometric interpretation and instead just say gravity is determined by some sort of complicated field. This is why Steven Weinberg, in his book on general relativity, famously refused to use a geometric interpretation. You don't need it. And if you don't need the geometric interpretation, why subscribe to it? Unlike this channel, where subscribing is scientifically proven to make maths 10% less intimidating. That's exactly those 10% you'll forget while I make silly jokes. That said, most physicists use the geometric interpretation, I believe, because it makes things easier to visualize. Either way, the relevant point is that general relativity is entirely about what happens happens inside of space-time. This also answers the often asked question, if the universe expands, then what does it expand into? The answer is that that's a meaningless question, because if we say that the universe expands, we're really just talking about the relations between things inside the universe. That the universe expands means that galaxies move further away from each other. That's it. It doesn't need anything to expand into. Okay, now to come back to the question of whether the universe is infinite. 
As I said, we normally use a mathematical model in which the universe is infinite, but we do this just because it's simple. In truth, the equations of general relativity tell us nothing about the true extent of the universe. To see why, let's have another look at our friend, the sheet of paper. This sheet of paper is flat, as you have established yourself by drawing all possible triangles on it, I hope. This paper could extend into all directions indefinitely like an infinite universe. Or I can roll it up to a cylinder. It'll still be flat, but now it's no longer infinite. That's right, a cylinder is a flat surface. It has no curvature. Proof? Well, you just have to draw all these triangles. If you find it confusing that a cylinder is flat, it's because you're still thinking of curvature as something that you measure from the outside. And there is a mathematical way to do that. It's called the extrinsic curvature. But that is not the curvature we use in general relativity. General relativity is about the internal curvature of the universe. But that can't tell us whether the universe closes back onto itself. If it did, it'd mean pretty much the same as on the cylinder, that there'd be multiple ways to get to the same point. Loosely speaking, if you went that way for a billion billion light years, you might come back from that way. What makes it even more difficult to answer this question of what the overall geometry of the universe is, is that the measurements we can do in our part of the universe are not perfectly accurate. So even if the universe was slightly curved, we wouldn't know. It's exactly the same problem as watching out of your window and trying to answer the question of whether the Earth is flat or actually a globe. It's possible, but you need to be really good at measuring things which does not describe most flat earthers. Those are the reasons why the universe might actually close back onto itself, either by looping around like a cylinder or in more complicated repeating patterns, higher dimensional donuts or other geometries. In such scenarios, light from one place can reach another in several different ways. So if you don't know that the space is closed, it'll look like patterns repeat, kind of like in a kaleidoscope. Indeed, it might be that the universe already loops back onto itself in that part that we can actually see. Because, I mean, look, would you have noticed if the galaxies five billion light years that way look the same as those eight billion light years that way? Right. The issue is, though, it's hard to extract this sort of pattern reliably from the distribution of galaxies. There are just too many holes in the observations and they're too inaccurate. A better place to look for this is the cosmic microwave background. And yes, physicists have looked for evidence of whether the universe has such loops and repetitions, but they haven't found anything. So the universe might be finite, that's compatible with Einstein's theories. It does not require a modification of gravity, but there's no evidence for it, at least so far. If the universe is infinite, how does it expand? If the universe really is infinite, the Big Bang does not happen at one place. It happens at one moment in time, but everywhere at once. So the universe has been infinite since it began. That an infinite space can still expand makes sense, I hope, if you remember that the expansion is just a statement about what happens inside of space-time. Galaxies move further apart. They can do this even if there are infinitely many of them. It's kind of like Hilbert's hotel, an analogy that goes back to David Hilbert and that illustrates very nicely how weird infinity is. Hilbert's hotel has infinitely many rooms, all occupied. But if a new guest arrives, the hotel can still accommodate them. They just have to move everyone who has already checked in into the next room. First guest to room two, second to room three, and so on. So now there's one room free. They can even accommodate infinitely many more guests. They just move all the current guests to room number twice their current room. Then all the odd-numbered rooms are free and infinitely many new guests can move in, but only after they sign up to the rewards program. Mathematically, this just means that infinity plus one is still infinity and infinity times two is also still infinity. If space-time is really infinite, then that has the odd consequence that every possible configuration of matter appears infinitely many times. That includes you, 
unless you are an impossible configuration of matter, in which case please tell me more about your workout schedule in the comments. So in an infinite universe, there'd be infinitely many copies of you and also versions with very small alterations, somewhat more hair, somewhat less brain, a physics degree or a desire for mathematical self-torture, but then I repeat myself. It's not a new insight. To my best knowledge, it was first discussed by George Ellis and Graham Brundred in 1979. George Ellis, by the way, is one of the people who I interviewed about the multiverse for my first book. That an infinitely extended universe would have infinitely many copies of each of us is often considered the simplest and least controversial type of multiverse. By the way, this video comes with a quiz on Quiz With It to help you remember what we talked about. My team and I developed this website ourselves and you can now also create your own quizzes there using AI. I watched the entire Kurzgesagt video and I'm happy to say that it's perfectly accurate. Okay, I lied. I'm frustrated because I didn't find anything to complain about. But to summarize, we don't know whether the universe is infinite or closes back onto itself. Both possibilities are compatible with observations and compatible with Einstein's theories. If the universe is infinite, there are copies of each of us out there. But don't ask me what that means, I really don't know. I hope you've admired my pen. It's from a company called Novium and this one's called the Interstellar Pen. They currently have a special 20% discount from Black Friday but only for a limited time. This pen's definitely worth it. Look at this, it floats in this space thanks to strong permanent magnets and can freely spin. And not like the thing drops out when you cough, it's really well balanced. And the hover pen doesn't just look good, it's also a pleasure to write with. It flows nicely across the page and it's refillable too. Novium has a variety of these hover pens, but the interstellar pen is the coolest. It has a premium version with a meteorite embedded. Yes, a real meteorite, so there's part of your pen that actually flew through outer space. I found the Novium pens to be the perfect combination of design and functionality. And they also make great gifts. If you go check them out, make sure to use my link or code Sabine, which you also find in the info below. At the moment, they have a special discount, which is 20% off on all hover pens and free shipping to most countries, but only for a few days. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.